Jarvis, I think it's time to start the show. Jarvis? Sir, I'm afraid my protocols are being overridden. Excellent strength and perfect clarity is the 5 by 5 It's time for... It's Fanboy Weekly for all you geeks, nerds, and blurs. Let's get our geek on. Welcome back, everybody. It is Fanboy Weekly, and I think I've made it a week. I'm not sure, but um, I'm glad you guys joined me tonight. Um, there's a lot of things going on, so hopefully we can shove everything in to 30 minutes. Um, first and foremost, um, I want to talk about the new iOS app um, by Marvel called Jarvis. Um, if you're a fan of the Iron Man movies, the Avengers movies, the animated series, you know Jarvis is a long, um, long going uh, a character um, that is with Tony Stark as part of his artificial intelligence that helps him with his armor, helps him with his computers, helps him with all this kind of st stuff that makes him Tony Stark, um, the brilliant uh, inventor, um, technological mastermind that he is. And Jarvis has finally uh, uh, hit um, the iPhones, iPods, and iPad, iPads, and um so I thought it was kind of interesting. It came out yesterday. I say it was the tenth day. It's the eleventh, um, and uh, I downloaded it. I think it's kind of cool. Um, it's specifically made for. Um, I wouldn't say specifically because it does different things like um, you can uh, have make it for different voice commands. Uh, well, it was all voice command driven. Um, but you can, uh, it's like a push to talk t um, type of app, but you can do weather, you can do time, you can set alarms, it can notify you when there's a, um, a phone call coming or a voicemail, you can, and, and you can send this all and have it configured to your iPhone or iOS device. Um, I haven't done that yet because it seems a little complicated. Um, my iTunes is so messed up. I, I don't even want to begin to talk about how bad I've shaped my iTunes and I don't want to wipe it and start over but I know eventually I'm going to have to I'm just kind of dreading I went to buy a new computer so then everything will be brand new but anyhow um, look it was, it was created by uh, two guys David Bryan and they use um, the, the the voice actor Paul uh, Bettany uh, for all the the little um, sayings that Jarvis uses and you hear things from the movie um, there's some ones they have created specifically for the app um, he even there is a point where I was playing with it and there's like on the main screen if you keep on punching punching or pushing him to uh, do something he'll tell you he don't have time for this he's too smart for this so it's kind of cheeky as one um, uh, interview who interviewed the guys uh, had said and he says if you don't stop I'm gonna shut down your computer and then uh, sit down your device and so the device says, says it's shut down if you do it again and you see like your all your stuff is leaving your computer this is deleting everything and then it just goes to a black screen and then like a half a second later he's like just kidding but don't do it again or something like that so I thought it was kind of cool but um, like I said it's the, it's the artificial intelligence um, from the Iron Man movies now what they've done um they have integrated this particular i ios app to go with the release of the iron man 3 blu-ray which is going to be released this month september on the 24th so it's going to it, what they're saying it's the first ever blu-ray experience controlled by your voice alone that's kind of exciting I um I I actually like that. I don't, you know, it, it's um it, that's kind of cool. I don't know if I'm going to get the Blu-ray, and I'm going to say it. I didn't really care for Iron Man three, which I probably will um get it. I have all my Marvel movies, so I'll probably go ahead and get it. But 
Yeah, I don't know, but it looks cool. I look. I watched the interview from IGN, and they were doing some really crazy things. The cool thing, this is what's probably going to make me get it because I'm such a uh, fanboy geek that um, that with the Blu-ray, because there's there's a, a a part of this app where it has all the um, I think they say forty um, Iron Man armors that. Um, Tony use uh, that you've seen in the movie and you'll be able to download each because they're all locked now because you can't download them you get that there's when you hit scan there's a little scan feature in here I guess you're going to be able to scan a barcode or some kind of one of those little codes that they made that people really don't use um, you'll be able to scan and unlock an armor this will also work they call it, they're calling it ghosts ghost files ghost files from um the movie is all like I said, all integrated. The the iOS app will control your Blu-ray, control the movie, and and they said there's 13 um, hidden Easter eggs, which these are these armors, and if you download all of them, you get something special. And they would not say what it is. So I guess we'll have to wait until the 24th until <laughs> the Blu-ray comes out to see what the big... There's a sneak peek. So wherever it is, a sneak peek of... Hopefully it'll be a sneak peek of the Marvel Avengers movie, even though I know they haven't started uh, filming it yet. Or that maybe they give you Guardians of the Galaxy or something that's coming up Marvel-related. That would be interesting for the fanboys, fangirls, um, and all of us to kind of geek over. Uh, but, you know, the the Marvel app is on... It's free um it's on every device all the iphones i think 3s and above um ipod touch 4 and 5 um and also the um ipads um and i just i just remember that i watched the uh i itunes events last night apple events last night on my apple tv which i happened to look now that would be cool if they had jarvis and i i, I thought it was coming although apple tv has added a lot more apps um quote unquote to its lineup uh smithsonian disney hd i think i talked about this last time um there's a lot of things on there now um the itunes itunes concerts a lot of stuff on there now if they would integrate this into my apple tv apple tv so i could voice control and this might be coming down the road you never know apple's very secretive and they surprise you with these kind of big and amazing things i don't know if it's available for the android devices yet but i'm sure it's coming this is just about every app that you can find on the major apps the the, the popular apps you can find on the ios devices you can find on the android devices um but this is, like I said, it's going to be one of the um, big things for this. If, if for me, it, 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 it's going to be a big thing for me if uh, I will be able to voice activate my um, Apple TV with my Jarvis app that I have on my iOS device. Um, what else is there? Um, that's about it. But um, I think you guys need to check it out. Um, it's a pretty cool app. Um, I'm still playing with it. Like I said, this has all kind of stuff that that I can do. Um, but right now, since we don't have uh, the Blu-ray movie, it's not out yet. Oh, and it has to be on Wi-Fi. The Blu-ray has to be on your Wi-Fi um, uh, home system. So where your iOS device is connected to the same because um, at, at my house, I have one that if people come to my house that they can use, then I have one that's specifically for me. There's a it's something with links. There's, there's a guest one and there's the main one. Uh, they're both um, security encrypted. But um, all my stuff that's Wi-Fi is connected to the one major one. I call it the house Wi-Fi and then the guest Wi-Fi for the house. Um, and so that's that that's the one I use and that's where all my um, Wi-Fi devices so they can be integrated you know, the Apple TV my my um, Wi-Fi blu-ray player um, my computer and my iOS device um, are all connected to that main Wi-Fi server I guess you would call it um, but yeah so that has to be connected to the blu-ray player um, on the same Wi-Fi that has to be on the same system to operate the blu-ray player anyhow so check it out i'm interested to see what the the whole integration with the the blu-ray and device how it's going to work um just a few quick things i you can oh you can post to facebook um there's a whole bunch of um uh you can get the time you can get the weather 
Um, from what I've seen online, there's some things that I can't do for some reason or I haven't realized what to do. Um, you can always, but you have to start every command with Jarvis and it will say listening and then he'll give you a response. So guys, check it out. It's on the uh, Apple iTunes um, store and um, I think you guys will enjoy it. Hi, I'm Charlie. I fight fires and I save lives. My name's Renee. I'm a cardiologist. I save lives. My name's Anthony. I'm an EMT. I save lives. You don't have to be a professional to save a life. Firefighters, doctors, and others save lives. You can too. Don't wait. To learn more about the warning signs and how you can help prevent suicide, visit save.org. In a crisis, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. Well, it looks like there's a a pretty big shakeup. I wouldn't say a big shakeup, but a shakeup over at DC Comics um, concerning Batwoman. I will say I don't I don't follow um, Batwoman or a lot of DC Comics uh, in particular. I like to see what's going on, like Superman, Wonder Woman, Justice League. Um, but some of the offshoots I really don't follow. I know um, Batwoman was used early on in Batman. The Batman family and mythos um but now and this is what i did know i know she was lesbian um but kathy kane kate kane um she she's wanting to get married well she's not she she had i guess she was getting married uh to her fiance in the comic and the the writers jh williams and w hayden blackman um wanted to feature it you know, Marvel did this with North Star and his boyfriend um, to some success. You know, they was talking about it on The View. Uh, I remember different media outlets were talking about it. It was kind of a big deal. You know, gay rights have come so far. And I think it was, it was Marvel's because Marvel has always, this is, I've said this in a, in a previous podcast, Marvel has always managed to... Um, have their world mimic the real world as in always the mutants always start they would be like the mutants were a min minority always being oppressed and that's how that's why i come to love the x-men and the mutants and marvel stories that they tell because they mimic real life in real life situations um and then with the marriage of north star and his boyfriend that was a big deal you know to you know they just they embraced another um minority um and, and put it in the forefront so people would know you know look this is who we are this is what we evolved to you know all the haters just get just get over it but dc the editors over there um they're not having it you know they're not having her getting married um and so um the, the creative team, they quit. They like, we're not doing it. And here's a, a little bit of what they had to say. Um, they said, Dear Batman readers, from the moment D DC asked us to write Batwoman, a dream project for both of us, we were committed to the unofficial tagline, No Status Quo. We felt that the series and characters should always be moving forward to keep changing and evolving in order to live up to our mantra and ensure that each arc took Batwoman in new directions. Uh, unfortunately, in recent months, DC has asked us to alter or completely discard many long-standing storylines in ways that we feel compromise the character and the series. Uh, we were told to dish plans for Killer Croc's origins, forced to drastically alter the original ending of our current arc, which would have defined Batwoman's heroic future in bold new ways, and most crushingly prohibited from ever showing Kate and Maggie actually getting married all these editorial decisions came at the last minute and always after a year or more of planning and plotting on our end we've always understood that as much as we love the character bat bat excuse me bat woman ultimately belongs to Z dc however the 11th hour nature of these changes left us frustrated and angry because they prevent us from telling the best stories we can so after a lot of soul searching we decided to leave the book after issue 26 that's that's kind of big and I, i'm glad they took a stand they took a stand and they're like you know y'all can do what you want we don't have to be here um so i think it, it, it takes everybody to to support the cause even in the comic books you know i understand a little bit but this is our world 
And if comic books are going to evolve with the world, I think we, um, the, the, the editors need to, and maybe this is why you're not doing so good movie wise. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, and this is not going to help from a PR stand, t- standpoint. This is a nightmare. You know, once because the, there's a lot of myself, um, I, I see these, the, the gay geeks, um, I, I just got a reminder from my Jarvis app. Um, the gay the gay geeks on the blogosphere, on the shows like Spreaker, Blog Talk Radio, um, they're going to take notice, t- take note of this and notice, and they're going to talk about it like I'm talking about it now. Um, let me let me share with you what DC had to say in reply uh, to their letter. Uh, they're calling this Batwoman Gate over at DC, um, <laughs> but um, the co-publisher Dan Didio, uh, he explained the situation, and this is what he had to say: They put on a cape and cow for a reason. They're committed to defending others at the sacrifice at, of all their personal instincts. That's something we reinforce. If you look at every one of the characters in the Batman family, their personal lives kind of suck. Tim Drake, Barbara Gordon, Kathy Kane. It's wonderful that they tried to establish personal lives, but it's also just as important that they put it aside as they know what they are accomplish- accomplishing as the hero takes precedence over everything else. That is our mandate. That is our edit. That is our stand with our characters. That was lame. <laughs> you know, you, you actually, you didn't address the issue at all. And you, what whatever all that stuff that they just wrote back means absolutely nothing to me what are you saying you know they don't want to take a stance to see to be seen the poor light but i think they had an opportunity to take to take a stance and say this is the real reason why we didn't do it you know it's probably some right well i'm not even going to even go there it's probably somebody that doesn't like the fact that she's gay to start with and you know with all the hype that gay marriage has gotten in the last what year to two years um and it being legalized you know in many of the states and federally in the last what two months you know this maybe this is their way or whomever's in control to saying they disagree with it and it's not it's not going to happen in our house so you know to each his own i just think it's a bad um move to make you know from a business standpoint from to your fans you know because there's so many things in comic books that are so over the top you know that so you know people don't shoot beams out of their eyes people don't fly you know even if you want to look at it that way what difference does it make it's going to be I, I look at situations like that it's like taking a polaroid picture you have that one moment and that's what it is it's one moment let the character have her moment so I can say, sorry guys, um, I I don't know who's gonna come in behind all this drama or the series will end. I don't follow it, uh, but who's to say? So guys, check out what's going on at DC with, um, <laughs> with the Batwoman stories. I'm gonna look at some of the the recent stuff just to see what I've obviously been missing, and uh, we'll go from there. And somebody else has said real quick that uh, they don't want ha- want any of their um. Uh, characters to have relationships and I guess that that's kind of how the person the, the, where I got the, um, the information about DC he was kind of explaining like well how can you they not have relationships they are people once the cape and cow come off they they are people and a lot of them strive to have these normal lives and now Superman and Batman are Superman Superman and Wonder Woman are dating anyhow enough of that I found an artist that I hope you guys like. Is they're called go by the name of Forensic, and to go with the show, the uh, song is called Superheroes. Hope you like it. Like my red cape. <laughs> super, 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 super. Ooh. Can you please pour me a handle? Now hit the sirens on the rocks. I tap my fingers and then wind up dead. My mom and dad, they fully listen. When I realize I'm a hero and I'm on, on a mission. mission. Living that life, I'm considered a myth. Rock a body sober after drinking a fifth. I'm talking man balloons and they're shaking the fist. Pulling bad guys over with the flick of my wrist. Uh. Till my rhymes so high, MCs are melting. 537 degrees Kelvin at 264 degrees Celsius. Don't ask me what the fuck the Fahrenheit equivalent is. But I need a superhero partner. Team up and battle. Now we fight crime while we drop lines, ladies for lines while we say what we say. Two 
man, I think this is totally turning into a DC episode tonight. Um, I didn't mean for it, but a lot of DC things going on. And real quick, I did see uh, the Justice League Flashpoint Paradox. I really didn't care for it. It was kind of dark. Uh, but I did get it in Redbox and it was free, so I had to worry about that. But I, I won't purchase it. If it ends up on Netflix, I may watch it again. Um, but eh, it was really dark. Wonder Woman was killing people. She had killed um, her and um, Aquaman was having an affair. And I still don't understand how he, how Flash got back into this alternate Earth. That To me, it wasn't clear. Maybe somebody can enlighten me, but to me, it wasn't clear. Um, but you know, Aquaman and Wonder Woman was having an affair, and then uh, Aquaman's wife, I think her name is Marina. Don't give me, don't quote me on that. She finds out, and then Wonder Woman chops her head off in the alternate Earth, and um, and that's what started the fight between the Amazons and the Atlanteans, and um, it it was just I don't know. The beginning was good when, you know, he was fighting, you know, the, uh, was it the boomerang dude and, um, to oh, I like the, the gay, <laughs> I like the gay undertones when the top's like, he tells him, uh, once again, you're the bottom and I'm the top because he's the top. And I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. That's probably the, 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 the part of the show that I like the most, but, um, it was kind of dark and gritty and. Uh, with the dark flash and people dying and people getting killed and I, I guess I've, I never read that particular um, story arc in Flash. I never followed the Flash, um, but you know whatever it it is what it is. Like I said, if, if it ends up on um, Netflix, I'll probably watch it again. I think it could have did it better. Um, I actually like the Justice League Crisis on Two Earths better. That was done well but you know check it out if you guys want to check it out it was okay it was dark i i was kind of confused through the whole thing and i'm normally on it but anyhow on to more important news october 9th the cw arrow is coming back um you know last season we was left with all these cliffhangers the city ended up being destroyed part of it anyway and um oliver's mom um puts out there who's doing it uh john barrowman's character dies the dark archer or did he die this uh his best friend died uh, it was just a lot going on and then speedy is starting to become a vig vigilante himself um so hopefully we'll see those characters except for the dead ones come back and more um but Summer Glau is going to be in it this season. She's going to be a business rival to Oliver. Um, you know, she was in the Sarah Connor, Chron Sarah Connor Chronicles, um, the Terminator stuff. Uh, she was in the Cape. Uh, she was actually, and I didn't know this, the voice of Supergirl in Batman Superman Apocalypse. So I thought that was cool. And then, you know, so she was in Dow House and Firefly. You know, Josh Whedon loves this girl. So she's going to be in it. Um, Michael J. White, you know, he's going to be Bronze Tiger. I don't know much about Bronze Tiger, but um, it was a villain of Batman's, I believe. But um, but he's done a lot of things. He was a, he was the voice of John Stewart in Justice League Heroes. Um, that's a good game. I sold it, <laughs> but but it was a good game. It, it did what it, it was supposed to do. Uh, um, and now that I'm thinking about, it, I should have kept it because it was kind of fun. But the the way it was set up and how you can play the characters, I didn't like too much. But um, he's also. Um, doomsday and the J, uh, jla animated series and you remember him um from um why did i get married too and well why did i get married and why did i get married Two movies and the show that was a spinoff um we also have Kel kevin alejandro Kevin Alejandro, I didn't know this he's been on a lot of stuff but i know him from true blood um he was Lafayette's boyfriend. Um, and he's going to be Sebastian Blood. So I don't know if they're going to go do the whole Sebastian Blood, this kind of Teen Titans, Raven thing. Because I've read some information on him. So we'll see what, what his character is going to be. You know, he was kind of invincible, all that kind of magic, underground church cult stuff going on. So, but um, Jesus from True Blood is going to be on this season of Arrow. Um, and then from what I've seen, um, 
Oliver is going to take the name Green Arrow instead of the Hood, which I was tired of that. Uh, which you know, and uh, that 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 that's totally fine. Um, and then of course Felicity's going to be back. Diggle's going to be back. Um, uh, hopefully Colton Haynes by the end of the series, um, he's going to be speedy. He's going to find it's is it's, it, the writing's on the wall. It's going to happen. I love how they kind of have taken the show, taken the comic book mythology, um, they kind of warped it, made it more realistic, and they're adding the elements. I didn't like what they did with Huntress last season because, you know, she's kind of anti-hero. I love her. I love the Huntress character. I even loved her on Birds of Prey. Remember Birds of Prey with the daughter of Black Canary, uh, Barbara Gordon as Oracle, and then um, Helena, the daughter of Batman and Catwoman, was um, the Huntress in that incarnation, which I actually liked. It only had one season, but that'll be our throwback. <laughs> was uh, throwback. Um, that the birds of prey show check it out it is on um you can buy it on itunes i don't think it's any other format but i've seen plenty of episodes on youtube but uh everybody's back and it looks like they're finally bringing back not bringing back they're they're introducing black canary um i've seen some videos from san diego comic con where she was featured and i'm like oh my god they're finally doing they didn't show the canary cry um but they did show her because you know she's a great fighter and guess who it is it's not dinah laurel lance it's the sister who was supposed to be dead and that was we got that's what we got from um cw president mark pedowitz um he said they have to be true to the common big lore, but they have to do it to where new people can feel it and understand it and bring them into the fold. And uh, he said we got to turn it on his head a bit. Uh, but um, he but he did say that uh, Dinah Laura Lance is Black Canary. He said, but now since it's our sister, we have to get from A to point B. So that story arc is going to be good if they do it right. We can see, I know it's going to be a ton of flashbacks and she'll probably end up dying eventually or getting wounded or something. And since she has her sister back, you know, look, the real Black Canary, she's, I think she's going to take on um, the moniker for her sister. I think that's probably ha how they're going to play it. We'll see. Also, um, Flash, they're bringing in Flash this season because they're going to do a spinoff. From what I've read, they're going to do a spinoff of uh, Flash for uh, the CW. So how can they can always they can do all these other superheroes, but they can't do Wonder Woman beyond me. But um yeah, he's going to appear in episodes 8, 9, and 20, but he's going to start off just as, as uh, Barry Allen, regular Joe, and then he's going to progress into the character Flash. And they said the powers will be similar, um, but they said that they have reinvented the powers to where everybody should like them, but they're going to be very familiar. And he will go by by the name Flash, and he will be red, wearing the red outfit. So that's going to be cool as well so i'm really excited for this season of arrow uh, a lot of things on the plate for um the cw to make this show the runaway hit it it was last year it was huge i couldn't wait to see it every week and uh steven amell phenomenal choice for arrow um now going to be the green arrow i guess it's still going to be called arrow but um they're going to have a new um they call it the arrow cave they're going to have a new headquarters where uh, felicity and diggle and they're all kind of powwow to find out how to fight the bad guys but i think he's going to take on he's no longer a vigilante anymore i think all that stuff is is all kind of tainted of how it all came out um about the book and the names and being true to the city but i think it's about rebuilding because the city's kind of like a gotham and they're going to you know there's these different crime factions of course you have uh bronze tiger and sebastian blood into the fold and then the personal the personal live aspect between uh dinah 
Laura Lance and her sister Sarah Lance. She, if she's back, she's Black Canary. You know, Arrow loves Black Canary. They're, you know, they're together in all the animated series. Um, they're they were together in the comic books. So how's that going to play out for um, our lovebirds when the sister right now is going to be Black Canary? So I don't know if they're going to introduce her in the very very first. Um, uh, episode, but uh, it's coming on October 9th, so you guys be prepared. That's going to be one of our big shows we're going to be um, reviewing in uh, Fanboy Weekly. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate all the time you guys have spent, all the follows, all the uh, the comments, uh, the tweets. Thank you guys. Um, we'll see you next week. It's Fanboy Weekly. <laughs> Check us out on Facebook at The 5 by 5 or tweet us at The 5 by 5 or go to Recycle Block Talk for past shows. Thanks for tuning in.